Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome to Dumb SEO Questions, episode 426. Uh, each week uh, we meet here to uh, review the questions and answers given on the Dumb uh, SEO Questions Facebook group. Um, with us tonight we have um, David Rosam. David is a leading internet marketer. He's based in the sunny south of the UK uh, in West Sussex. Tim Kappa is um, based in Corby, about 100 miles north of London. Um, Tim is also a Google product expert um, in the Google My Business community. Uh, you can find Tim at onlineownership.com. Find uh, David at uh, davidrosam.com. And Masataki Wasi, you can find at wasaweb.net. Um, he's based in Wimbledon uh, in uh, London. Um, okay, well, we've got uh, nine questions tonight. Um, let's have a look at them. Um, our first one is from Sip Ryan. And um, as Sip said, it's titled Analyzing a Category on an E-Commerce Site. Uh, and Sip said, hey, guys, how do you properly analyze a, ca ca a category uh, on an e-commerce site to see which products can generate the biggest traffic? Mm. Well, <laughs> so if you are, if you've got an e-commerce site, uh, uh, I hate to be telling you how to suck eggs, but surely you must have done some market research into the products you're selling. Um, and that typically tells you what is selling. Um, forget the traffic. Um, it's what people want to buy. Uh, if you're selling snow to Eskimos, uh, I think the traffic is going to be pretty low. Uh, the other way you can do that is, I mean, your search console will give you a basic, basic insight. Um, you know, your impressions, um, that's assuming you, you know, your impressions for based on your categories. Um, you can use tools. Uh, there's loads of tools, you know, just do a top level query. So if it's garden chairs, um you know you can use tools some rush ahrefs i mean most most uh things will give you some kind of idea on times in, t in terms of um in terms of this the other thing you can do is your your data and data is going to be pretty good is um use ads estimation you know uh, uh estimated via ads because you know they've got um shopping feeds merchant feeds they're going to be pretty hot on what your you know your sort of estimated traffic is but bear in mind most of these tools also use that and sometimes it can be completely way off um but yeah um i don't think you know like for an e-commerce i don't think you should be worrying about traffic the point is you should be trying to sell the product like I work with a few e-commerce sites and I've never worried about which one of their categories has the more traffic or has a traffic breaking down. My concern is how do I sell this product for the client? How, how do I market it? Yeah. So anyway, about two cents. Thank you, Tim. It's a juicy question, David. It is, yeah. Um, <laughs> you've thrown it to me. Okay, let's, let's jump in. Um, yeah, I, I think uh, Tim's last point would be where I uh, start from. Um, the biggest traffic. The biggest traffic it may not sell you. Uh, may not sell you much. 
um, you've got to understand your uh, your buyers, where they are, uh, what they want. Um, just getting a load of people um, coming onto your website uh, is not necessarily going to get you any business. So I think that before you start thinking about analyzing you've got to you've got to be very clear about your your end point your goal um and for me with any e-commerce site the uh the end point the goal is to sell lots of widgets pink fluffy elephants or whatever they might be um so yeah think think in terms of business rather than old styly seo metrics like traffic Thank you, David. Any more? Okay. Let's move on to the next. And um, this one is from Perry Bernard. Um, Perry uh, um, has a question entitled internal link on an old post pointing to a new post. Uh, Perry said, hi, everyone. I have a simple question brackets dumb uh, if i add a new internal link in an old post and the new post new link is pointing to a new post um will that affect badly for my structure or seo thanks uh i think you i think your scrapings have gone wrong again jim uh i think perry was the first answerer i don't know oh, right right, uh, right. mario ziv ziv um however you say that must have been the the questioner um no problem with this at all if it make if it's a sensible link if it links things uh if, if it makes things better for the reader if it links like things together the the age of the content is not an issue in fact, going back and doing internal linking is a very good thing as far as SEO is concerned. So you're not, in that case, you're not worried about how old the, the content is. So uh, think about your readers, think about your, your customers, and go ahead and do your links. Thank you, David. Um, we'll get that. Um um coding error um fixed as soon as we can all right so let's um go to the next um this one is uh, from oren prunk um the question is titled how do you find backlinks um backlinks to eat rates uh, for ranking on google specifically See, it's a favorite uh, subject of jd fitzpatrick's uh, um he gives a, a good answer I don't do this, so I can't answer it. <laughs> I don't look, go looking for backlinks. I write content and try and get them to come to me. Um, so I'll let Jody uh, have the stage for this one because uh, I don't do it and I don't know an, eff an efficient way of doing it. And further below, um... Amun John's answered as well, and that's a very good answer too. Okay. All right, let's um, go on to the next. Yeah, I've got my, my screen tabs switched around tonight. I'll have to try and figure that out. Um, Jace Buffon um, asks the question titled, can I have 
pages in French and meta descriptions in English. Um, Jay said, hi, all. I have a question, but cannot really find the answer. I have finished building a website, a, a kind of uh, a directory for the French expats uh, in Australia. The content of the pages is in French. Um, however, I, I realized today that uh, while it's um, for uh, French speaking people, on Google, people might search in English because it's in Australia. Um, like French restaurant in Sydney or French Grand Prix and so on. So my question is, what would be the best practice for the SEO? Can I have pages in French and meta descriptions in English? Thanks in advance. I would say no. Keep everything in French because the content is in French. You're targeting francophone audience. Yeah and you know what's the purpose of having meta description in English and people land on your site if it's a sort of monoglot anglophone who doesn't speak a word of French what's the point of that keep everything in French yeah yeah you can always do um, you can always do what ifs what if a man searching for green plastic buckets were to come along uh, should i put something on my website to attract him you need to be very clear about your audience uh, and your audience is not these people uh, searching in english for a french restaurant i believe so um it's not so much the mixing the languages it's just being clear about what you're doing with your well it's not just mixing languages it's uh, uh it's being clear with what you're doing with your site and its purpose and who it's uh, who it's designed for thank you david any more okay let's go to our next um the question is titled, is there any value in including a no-follow link? Um, hi, everyone. Um, I'm wondering if there's any value in including a no-follow link to a company's uh, high-profile clients um, in the um, uh, our clients include section on home slash about pages. Or would it be best to just use alt text, a file name, etc., to, to show Google which companies uh, they're working with? Well, well, there's not a problem. <laughs> so, so the odd thing here is, no follow is meant to be. I don't trust this site. Like, why would you not trust the people you're working with? So that's my first thing. Um, the second thing is like, I, I don't see it as a problem, um, with you linking out to them. Uh, but what I would say is probably a better way to do it from linking all over the flipping place to them. Um, why don't you create a profile for each of them on site? And then all of those links go to their particular profile page where you describe what you've done with them um are you still working with them or what was the nature of the initial work with them did you just do this was it this was it short what do you see what i mean describe the nature of your work with them and then that singular page then links to them rather than having all these pages with the outbound links not that there's anything wrong with it but make it more like you know, if somebody if somebody's going to be impressed by the company you worked with, they kind of want to know what you did with them. <laughs> yeah, so it it makes sense to create a case study, and of course, um, you can you know there's added value in that. Like, if somebody searches who did this advert for X Y Z company, your case study page is going to come up they've got the answer they know now who did the advertising for them right 
So that relationship can be further enhanced. Yeah, good one, Tim. You're not just a pretty face. All right, let's um, move now to number six on our run list. Um, it's, um, it's, is it really important that I have individual pages for each service? Um, um, he said, I, I was going to focus uh, on the cold campaign, so I'm just rushing it, and I'll start making contents and doing on-page uh, from next month. Um, let's, uh, this is a question about whether you should wait until you've got a, um, a fairly complete site before you launch it or whether you, um, whether you launch, um, something that, that works, maybe works after a fashion for your, uh, for your customers, uh, for your company, um, and coming along and filling in the gaps and growing the growing the tree as uh, as you go along and the times i see the former happening um it happens all the time there's a kind of worry about what if i put it out and it's not quite right um you will never figure out if it's not quite right until you put it out and see how it performs for one thing so find it work out what's the kind of the minimum thing you need um your uh, you could have a service page you know that's that's quite often the thing with a uh, in, in the uh, in the structure of a website you have a service page and then you have all these separate service pages in detail off of that you can do that. That's what your service page could do. And there's not to say you can't go, come along and change it and make it so it works with your individual service pages. And those service pages don't have to be all launched at once. You can do them as you have the time, as the services are ready. When you think you've got a proper pitch together, whatever, just, just do it. Just get the stuff out there and add to it. Yep, that sounds reasonable to me. Uh, anybody else to, to contribute on this one? Okay, let's go to the next. Would unrelated content hurt my SEO, my search engine optimization? No, it wouldn't. Um, anyway, he said, so if my website is about photography and I start including items, not related to photography, would that hurt my SEO? Oh, what a wonderful question. What's, uh, what is unrelated? Um, it's, it, this is gonna be an it depends answer, I think. Um, if it's about photography and you start, um, you start writing about artificial intelligence, say, Although you could say that there's artificial intelligence in uh, uh, in in, uh, in cameras now. Let's let's think about something else. Green jellies, and you started writing about green jellies. There's probably not much point in doing that because you're unlikely to have much overlap between your two audiences: those who are interested in photography and those who are interested in green jellies. So you may well think. Hard, you may well have to think hard about starting a green jelly website. Now, if you are starting to write about, supposing your photography site is about professional photography, I don't know. I don't know whether it's about photographic kit or whether you go out and photograph weddings. But if you were to write about weddings, um, there would be it wouldn't be the same as photography, but it would be linked to photography. It would be something that would that would sit quite happily within uh, a wedding photography or a professional photography site. 
So um, you've got to ask yourself, is it sensible? You know, why would you be wanting to write about green jellies on your photography site? Uh, if you're thinking about adding unrelated green jelly co content to your website, don't. If you're thinking about doing something that has got um, uh, some kind of link to photography, some reason for being there, then it won't harm, harm it at all. Um, on an SEO level, because I've been talking about a more of a business level rather than an SEO level, um, think about your structure think about how you you lay your website out because it's quite normal for a business to to add services add products to its its website and you wouldn't say oh i can't do that because i haven't started off um my my new my new product or service wasn't there when i started the website i can't add it of course you can just be careful about how you structure it and whether your your um, whether your readers, whether your customers are likely to be the same people for the for the for the topics that you're you're covering. Yeah, thank you, David. All right, uh, let's go to our next. This one uh, is from. M M M Fipo, uh, I can go Quamba. Um, it's titled Duplicated Articles uh, on M Multilingual Sites. It says, uh, Hi, my company runs a WordPress multilingual site um, with French and English versions for the homepage. However, for the articles inside, we only have uh, a French version. And this is because the the team decided to put duplicated uh, French articles on both sites for user-friendly journey. Will this affect SEO? To make it clearer, um, our website URLs for French and English, um, the versions will be like um, a goodlife.com slash xxx and goodlife.com slash en slash exxx which has exactly the same contact content in the same language uh, thanks for your advice okay i'm a bit confused with this one so is he saying uh, um um that they have they've got french they've got french articles on the en Language exactly. Page. So, so the the, on, the only thing that's localized in English is the homepage, which is yeah. in English. But yeah. then, well, if someone lands on the English homepage, clicks through, everything is in French. Yeah. That's no good, is it? No. There's no point in putting it in English. Yeah. Uh, you know, on the English side. <clears throat> the way I would deal with this is. Obviously, just tidy the, all of it up, you know. Uh, have your English one, your homepage, right? And then <laughs> delete all the French shit on the EN pages because they're already on the French pages. Just uh, have your one proper HO flag on the homepage. Fair dues, you know, you haven't you haven't translated the rest. That's not a problem, um, and you'll be surprised if somebody does click through to the, in the navigation, which ends up onto a French page from the home page. Well, hey, Google actually offers a suggested translation. So um, you know, whilst you're working on the rest properly, um, but no, you you don't you don't want that running across all over. I mean, how would, how would, like, what do you think Google would choose? Because, look, duplicate's not a penalty, but it's filtered. I wonder which Google would do, choose 
decide to choose. I'm guessing they'd probably go with the French main site over the English purely because that's the one that, that I mean, I'm sure they can detect that it's like, no, this isn't English. <laughs> this is a problem. Um, we're just not even going to show these and we'll re resort to showing the exact duplicate of it, but on the main site, you know. Yeah. I mean, the search console will tell you which one um, they've chosen as the canonical version. Yeah. Okay, let's um, meander down to uh, number nine on our run list. Um, what are the advantages of choosing a 301 permanent redirect? Um, as a redirection type for a page, does changing this to a 302, uh, 307, 410 or 451 um have uh, any specific uh, uh search engine optimization specific advantages thank you for helping me understand better well if you're going to redirect use 301 if it's a permanent one if you're using a temporary redirect it's a 302 410 if it's gone gone yes yeah, like no that would have no advantage for you because yeah. he's asking about a redirect yeah <laughs> So, yeah, I think it's perhaps it's a case of overthinking things. Um, but yeah, it, it, it seems a bit odd. Um, no, you don't want to use 410 um, if you're redirecting something. And 451 is the legal reason one, isn't it? Uh, you know, something can be shown due to a legal reason in, for that particular visitor or something like that. So that has a specific meaning, which is different from um, redirect. Yeah, and you forgot about 404, like he's just jumped from the basic delete the page to a 410. Mm. But really, it's only just the, uh, the 301, 302 that we're we're looking at the others are for overthinking yeah so 301 it's permanently moved that that product is permanently moved and this is its new place 302 is um maybe it's out of stock um so i'm going to 302 that just to you know keep my customers happy to the next possible item and then when it's back in stock although you know some things, obviously pages, CMSs have options for that to display in stock and out of stock. Um, but your 302 could be, you could choose to do a, a, a temporary redirect until it's back in or you've fixed that page and slightly updated it because there was a new images or I don't know, the thread on the screw is slightly different and you had to wait for the manufacturer guidelines before you updated it or something or whatever and then remove it. Yeah, don't, don't use it for as one of my clients did. Um, one worrying if they might want to put it back sometime in the future. Um, that wasn't going to happen, but they did a 302 and left it there for years. Yep. And the other thing is if you're doing a 301, and you trying to be clever with it. So let's say you 301 redirect a spanner to the tire page. Yep, to the tire, the top line tire page. Google knows, yeah, you're taking a piss now. A, a spanner is not related to a tire, especially the top line navigation, right? And then in Search Console, you'll see it showing up as a soft 404. Like, they, they're not daft. You know, just 
makes sense you know because some people go oh well this page you know because it was quite good and it used to get a lot of traffic i'm just going to redirect it to something which makes no freaking sense or to the home page is another old mistake isn't oh it? yeah yeah it's another fantastic one yeah <laughs> okay <clears throat> Uh, any more uh, um, items on the agenda um, before I, I, I close the meeting? All right, we'll, we'll um, I know when I click this, um, it'll be thank you for watching time. Um, we'll be back uh, next week uh, to do this um, all again. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Tim Kappa, uh, Masataki Wasa, David Roseanne. Um, your contribution uh, makes this such a, a valuable resource and your time and uh, dedication is appreciated. Um, I thank people like Michael Martinez, Brenda Malone, who, uh, uh, Richard Hearn and uh, Evan Johns and Perry Bernard. Uh, all those people who, who make um, Domitio questions uh, such a valuable resource on Facebook. All right, I'll click the button and, and, to stop recording and uh, we'll see you next week.